Hello and welcome to another tutorial for Microsoft Excel beginners. In this tutorial we're going to start looking at formatting your spreadsheet and to begin with we'll look at applying basic formatting. Now on the home tab of Excel 2010 if you have a look at the second section along the font section and also the next one alignment those are where you will find most of your common formatting tools. So to summarize the tools in the font section, you have the font type and font size. You also have bold, italic, underline, very familiar tools if you use a word processor. You have a border tool for changing the border styles on the cells. You have cell background color and you have font color. And then two buttons just above there are for increasing and decreasing font size in small steps. So in the alignment section we have familiar tools left, centre and right for aligning text within the cell and above that you have vertical alignment so you can align text at the bottom, in the middle or at the top of a cell as well. To the right of that we have rotation tools so you can change the rotation of text in a cell and if I click on the drop down there you'll see you also have options for running the text vertically up or down a cell if you want to do that. Below that we have indentation buttons. These allow you to step text forward or back within a cell should you need to do that for alignment purposes. We also have wrap text which we'll be looking at in this tutorial and merge and sensor which is the first thing I'll be looking at. Now the first thing I want to do here is modify my title. If I click into cell A1 the problem I've got is that I'd like the title to be censored across those four columns and at the moment it's stuck out on the left so I might for example move it a little bit nearer to the middle and I can do that if you just click on the edge of the cell you can actually click and drag across so if I drag it across to B1 release the mouse that looks a little bit better it's more centered but not quite perfect now Excel does have a nice tool built into it that will allow me to automatically center that across those four columns. It's called Merge and Center and to use it what I need to do is select from A1 across to D1, in other words all the cells that run across my table and in the alignment section you will find the button Merge and Center so just click on that and you will see what happens. It merges all four cells into one and nicely centers the text. Uh, the next thing I'd like to do is change the size of the font, so I'm going to come up into the font section, go to the font size box there that's currently set to 11, click on the drop down arrow and you'll notice here as I move the mouse down you'll see the size automatically update. This is Excel's live preview and it's quite useful, it gives you a, a look at how it will appear before you select your font size. I'm going to choose size 18, that suits my purpose, so click on that. And to make it stand out a little bit more, I can also click on the bold button there, B for bold. The next thing I want to do is make some of my labels stand out a bit more. So I'm going to select cells A2 across to D2. And again, click on that B for bold button. And I'm also going to highlight these labels down at the bottom, total, average, max, min, and count the same way just click on the B for bold. And one more thing, I will also reselect my labels at the top and just maybe tweak the size a bit, bring that up to 12 point, just make those stand out a bit more from the rest of the table. So while I have these cells selected, I'm going to fix the problem in B2. Now I could obviously modify the column width, but I don't really want to have that column wider than the others, or I don't want all the columns to be wide at all. And the solution to this is actually to make the text wrap around within the column. And again, Microsoft have thought about this in advance and they provided a solution. And again, in the alignment section, all you need to do here is click on the wrap text button. And if I come back against the spreadsheet, just click away, you'll see what's happened, that the text has wrapped around in the column. So in situations where you have multiple lines of text, you don't need to expand the column to ridiculous lengths. You can use the wrap text solution and that will keep your columns a sensible width. One more thing I'm going to do here is just reselect those four cells one more time. Come across to the alignment section again and this time just click on the small button 
just down at the bottom right of that section. And what that will do is it will open up the traditional cell formatting dialog that appeared in older versions of Excel and is still available in Excel 2010. And I'll just make sure the Alignments tab is selected. In the horizontal section here, I'm just going to choose Center. And again, in the vertical section, also choose Center. Note, by the way, I also have the text control here with the wrap text with a little tick in it, which just confirms that I have set that control. Click OK. And again, click away, and you'll see what's happened there. It looks a bit neater, having been centered. The next stage in formatting the spreadsheet is to apply a bit of colour. So if I click into cell A1 and to apply the background colour I simply click on the drop down arrow next to the fill colour tool and as I move the mouse over the colours again you will see that Excel instantly updates the spreadsheet to give me a preview of the colour. Now one thing to watch out for is that as you choose your colours watch out for the contrast on the spreadsheet. Now if you're planning to print out, for example, do not choose a dark text on a dark colour. So I might, for example, think that dark blue looks really good with black text, which looks okay on screen, you might just about get away with that, but when you print that out then you will notice a problem and some people will have difficulty reading something with that poor contrast. So I would strongly recommend that for both screen and printing out, make sure you have a good high contrast so there's no problem reading what you're presenting. So if I just click back onto that Fred's Video Classic, so I'm going to go to that drop down and if you don't see the colour that you want, you can actually go down to the bottom and choose more colours and you have a custom option here and a standard option. I'm going to go to the standard one and I'm just going to select a light green now one thing you will notice that as I select these you don't get a live preview on the spreadsheet instead you get a preview down at the bottom right of the dialog so here I can see the color the new color I will be applying that looks okay to me so I'm just going to click OK and you'll see on the screen there the contrast is nice and high there's no problem reading that I'm also going to apply colors to the column labels so I'm going to select again A2 across to D2 click on the drop down and try and find something suitable that's uh, fairly contrasty. That will do, that aqua, if I click on that. Click away again, you can see that looks fine. One thing you may notice is that as I apply the colors, the spreadsheet grid lines disappear. Now, that may or may not be a problem, depending on what you intend to do. What I'm going to show you here is how that would look if I chose to print. So if I click on the File tab, go to the Print section there, and if I just zoom into that preview, you'll see the problem that I don't have any grid lines at all on the printed spreadsheet. It certainly would be a problem when you're reading along a long row of data. Grid lines can act as a guide in that case. And to apply grid lines in print preview, come down to the bottom of the print dialog and click page setup. Go to the sheet tab and click on grid lines and then click OK. And you'll see there the grid lines are applied, but there is still the problem of the title row and the column labels not having grid lines applied. So those need to be fixed in another way. So let's come out of print preview and go back to the home tab. What I'm going to do is select all the cells from A1 all the way down to D15, the whole table basically. Come back up to the font section, click the drop down arrow and you'll notice we have many border options for the cells. I'm going to choose the All Borders option. Select that, click away, and you notice now that the borders now appear on all the cells and slightly stronger than the default ones on the worksheet. If I go back to Print Preview, again click on the File menu, go to Print, and this time we'll see we have borders around all the cells and there's no problem there. And this time I'll press the escape key and that takes me out of print preview and brings me back to the worksheet. To close this tutorial I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking on the spreadsheet. I'm going to delete the total value in cell B11 because it doesn't really apply when you're adding up rental price values. It doesn't make any sense to have a total there. I'm also going to delete the cells in C15 and D15 
because they're simply duplicating the count value in B15 so these other two cells are a bit redundant so I'll delete those and what I'm going to do here is click into B11 type the dash on the keyboard and that is basically the minus sign press the enter key and I'll put a dash into C15 and D15 lastly just center the uh, dash in B11 now the reason I've done that is just to show anybody who might look at the spreadsheet that those cells have not been left blank by accident so there aren't any missing numbers okay so that concludes this tutorial hopefully you found something in there that was useful and you can start to make your spreadsheets look a bit more colorful and interesting in the next tutorial we're going to look at more formatting options and some of the new features in Excel 2010 so thank you for watching this one and I'll see you next time